Good morning students. Today I am going to discuss about mechanics of breathing. A very important topic. It will be difficult topic also. Students immediately don't get afraid. What difficult topic? Huh? The main aim of this video is to make that difficult topic very very easy. So at the end of this video we will be able to understand each and every concept as easy as possible. So that will be the main objective of this video. Let us enter into the video. Today what I am going to teach it will be at the resting state especially. So when So, when at a resting state means when you are not going to inspire or you are not going to expire, not going to inhale any air or not going to expire. At resting state, what happens to the entire respiratory system? You can see here two lungs, this is chest wall cavity and this is visceral pleura, the one which covers the lung and this is parietal pleura. So, now what I will be discussing is the various pressures available and after that is it resting state. So, today main aim will be when your lung is in rest stage. For example, now I am standing, I am not going to inspire, not going to expire. So, no, no air is going to come in, no air is going to come out. What is going to happen in the respiratory system? What is going to happen in the pleural space? What is going to happen in the alveolar space? So, all those things I will be discussing. Maybe in the next video, part 2. So, this will be part 1 video. In the part 2 video, we can go for when I start inspiring, what happens to all these pressures? So, before that, I will explain the pressure is available, note it down, so one, so here obviously alveoli is going to be there, I am just drawing the rough diagram, so one is intra alveolar pressure, note it down, so one is intra alveolar pressure, two, so two is, this is visceral pleura already marked there, this is parietal pleura, blue color is parietal pleura, this is visceral pleura, so this will be intra pleural pressure, so note it down. Pressure 1 is the pressure within the alveoli which is intra alveolar pressure. Pressure 2 is between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura which is intra pleural pressure. 3 which is around the chest wall cavity or outside is atmospheric pressure or we call it as barometric pressure. So, I have discussed 3 pressures. Note it down. 1 is intra alveolar pressure. 2 is Intrapleural pressure, 3 is atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure. Now let us go to the values of the various pressures at resting state. We all know the outside atmospheric pressure is how much atmospheric pressure. You can even pause the video and try to answer the normal atmospheric pressure is how much. Yeah, correct. It is 760 millimeter mercury. Now why I want to discuss all the pressure values, please, please note it down the gases always will want to move or transport from higher pressure to lower pressure. The entire respiratory system, the pressure gradient is the main thing which causes the transport of gases. Always gases love to transport or move from high pressure to low pressure. That is why all these pressure values we are discussing. So, now the lung is at rest, three pressures. Within the alveoli is intra alveolar pressure, between the two pleura is intra pleural. So, this is pleural space which contains pleural fluid. And this is you can see here ribs and the costal cartilages and this is the chest cavity and this is the atmosphere and obviously this is the diaphragm. Okay. So now let me concentrate on intrapleural pressure because you might have learnt that even at rest intrapleural pressure is negative. So my first discussion is going to be why intrapleural pressure is always negative. If you know the answer, you can pause it and tell. I again repeat the question, why intrapleural pressure is always negative? Let's unlock the answer for this. Why intrapleural pressure is always negative? If you want, I can even write the value at resting state, it is around minus 5 millimeter mercury. Some books it has given minus 2.5, minus 4. So, minus 2.5 to minus 5. Let us make it simple. At resting state, you are not going to inspire, not going to expire. You are not doing anything. No muscles are involved, just I am just standing without doing any breathing. At that time, negative. So, if anyone knows the answer, you can even write it in the comment box. So, let me discuss that. First of all, please, please understand lung is elastic structure as well as chest wall is elastic structure. They both are elastic structures. So, this is just to see me. So, this is the lung which is elastic structure. 
on the outside is a chest wall cavity which is also a elastic structure so we are dealing with two elastic structures the entire thing is respiratory system but the beauty of this is this lung is elastic structure i, I told you but the property of this lung is it loves to recoil or it loves to coil shrink otherwise i will make it simple or otherwise if i take this lung now imagine i am having two lungs surrounded by thoracic cavity or chest wall cavity which is a respiratory system now what i do i take the lung from the respiratory system or from the thoracic cavity and keep it outside now imagine this is the lung so imagine this pennas lung i am keeping it outside what we expect the lungs will shrink or it has elastic fibers lot of elasticity in it the lung nature is elastic it loves to coil recoil or it loves to shrink so what will happen this lung loves to collapse otherwise so i will do, do using this color so yeah this is what uh, this lung loves to collapse or recoil or move inwards otherwise the same thing what this chest wall cavity does is it loves to expand outside now otherwise now what i do let the lung be within me so lungs will be within my body i take the chest wall cavity alone and keep it outside so imagine this orange color now this is chest wall cavity this is chest wall cavity what will when i keep it outside it will expand so note it down lungs loves to move inwards chest wall loves to move outwards so very simple so what happens here this both are moving in opposite directions very 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 important point lung move inwards chest wall move outwards so now you can answer yourself when this both are moving in opposite directions what will happen to the pleural space or what will happen to this space whether it is going to be more or less normal this is at resting state no respiration is made but they both are in that nature lungs love to move inwards or coil chest wall loves to move outwards so when they are both in opposite directions there is a space created yeah i have already written the space created now what happens to this otherwise you can even pause the video and answer what will happen to the volume here now because of this movement of both two elastic structures lung and chest wall cavity what will happen to this volume the space has increased so what will happen to this volume yeah correct so the volume increases so the volume of this pleural space is increased next question then what about pressure so you can ask sir okay sir volume increases what happens to the pressure sir what will happen to this pressure here the pressure is ipp intrapleural pressure now again you have to go back to physics yes and in physiology many places will be coming up for this boyle's law even now you can pause the video and try to answer what is boyle's law yes boyle's law is pressure is inversely proportional to volume and vice versa or otherwise i can even write this for example volume is inversely proportional to pressure or pressure or both are inversely related so now see here what happens here volume yes volume is increased pleural volume is or the pleural cavity volume is increased why it is increased both are moving opposite direction creating a space now what will happen to this intrapleural pressure yeah it is negative the reason for this minus 5 only we are discussing so for this question only i have discussed so far why the intrapleural pressure is negative and the importance of intrapleural pressure again the negativity only prevents the alveoli from collapsing see here this is a suction created now if this intrapleural pressure is not negative imagine this intrapleural pressure is positive just for understanding what will happen yeah not this be here alveoli now imagine this pressure here this minus 5 here is positive imagine just this is high pressure so what will happen this pressure will push the alveoli and tries to collapse the alveoli or otherwise imagine i am beating on the alveoli i am keeping high pressure high pressure over the alveoli so what will happen to the alveoli there is possibility of alveoli to collapse so to prevent the alveoli from collapse is also one of the reason for intrapleural pressure being negative and the cause i discussed yeah now next question anyone answer what is the intraalveolar pressure value what is the intraalveolar pressure value so it is actually based on atmospheric pressure yeah we already discussed atmospheric pressure is 760 mm and it is direct communication so i am not going to inspire not going to expire so it is in direct communication 
So, what will happen to this intraoral pressure also is 760 millimeter mercury or otherwise the intraalveolar pressure is 0 with respect to atmospheric pressure. So, no change in pressure, no plus, no minus because it is in direct communication. So, note it down. So, here I am not going to tell us intraalveolar pressure is 760 because in your books it will be mentioned as 0. The reason for 0 is it is same as atmospheric pressure or it is 0 with related to atmospheric pressure. So, we are here calculating intraalveolar pressure with respect to atmospheric pressure is 0. Note it down. Now, coming to the third pressure, which is already atmospheric pressure, that is the chest wall cavity pressure outside, which is atmospheric pressure, which already do. So, now I will write the value. Intraalveolar pressure is 0 because no air coming in, no air going out. Direct communication. Intraporal pressure is minus 5. Just now we discussed. Yeah, some books it is given minus 2.5, minus 4. I am rounding it off. Minus 5, even minus 5 is correct. Atmospheric pressure is 0, which is also called a barometric pressure. So, three pressures I discussed. Yeah, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Yeah, one value is 0 with respect to atmosphere, 2 is minus 5, 3 is atmospheric pressure. Yeah, so we discussed three pressures, but to confuse more, this intraporal pressure is negative. We understood two elastic structures moving in opposite directions. But even this intraplural pressure, it varies within this space itself. For example, in upper part, intraplural pressure may be more negative or less negative, whatever it is, which I will be explaining. Middle part, maybe it may be minus 5. Okay. Middle part, I give, I, give, I give you the answer, minus 5. Lower part, it is going to vary. In IPP here is what? IPP here is what? Here it is minus 5. I keep it as minus 5. Yeah, now, I will give the option intraplural pressure at the lower part of lung. Again, I repeat the question. Intraplural pressure at the lower part of lung is. I will give the options. Option A, increased. Option B, same as minus 5. Option C, decreased. So, now I will start the timer. So, you have to answer option A increased in the lower part of the lung intraporal pressure. Option B same as minus 5. Option C decreased. Yeah, now I will start the timer. 1, 2, 3. So, you start uh, commenting on the answer or you just imagine yourself the correct answer. 4, 5. Yeah, now, let me tell you the answer. It is actually more positive or it may be minus 3. Instead of minus 5, it may be minus 3. Intraporal pressure in the lower part of lung. Obviously, then what will happen to the intraporal pressure in the upper part of lung? More negative, maybe minus 7 or minus 8. Now, let me explain. Here, yeah, always keep in mind the Boyle's law. Pressure and volume are inversely related. Now, imagine gravity also plays a very, very important role. That is why I want to discuss here. Now, see here what happens. Yeah, in this plural space, where the gravity is going to be more weight. So, weight of the lung. Now, listen here. I will try to extend like this. What happens to this lung weight will be more in this space or in this space? Very simple. Or this lung is going to come down to this plura mostly or to this plura. Otherwise, I will make it simple. Yeah. So, what otherwise, what happens to the volume here? What happens to the volume here? The air volume decreases in lower part of the lung. Do not confuse. This is just an extra point. Whatever discussed, if you understood, well, good. But since I, I want to make you very clear in concept, I am going in depth. Now, in this place, because of the gravity, the lower part of the lung tries to come down. They love to come down. So, this space is actually decreased. Or otherwise, volume is decreased. Space less means what? Volume is going to be less. Now, see here. When volume is less, what will happen to the pressure? Pressure is going to increase, positive. Otherwise, from minus 5, it will come to minus 3 like that. Negativity means it has to decrease. Or minus 5, we add plus 2. Minus 5 plus 2. Yes, minus 3. Now, see here. This space, upper part of the lung. So, what happens? As I mentioned, because of gravity, 
lung tries to comes down the weight of the lung tries to pull it down now what will happen to this volume yeah this volume will increase compared to this this volume is going to be more that's what i want to tell upper part of the lung in the pleural space volume is going to be little bit more because of gravity effect now compare when volume is more when volume is more what will happen to pressure pressure is decreased so already i told minus 5 now what will happen yeah minus 8 minus 5 you had another negativity decreased so minus 2 or minus 3 so it may be minus 1 or minus 8 so that also you can note it down i give the conclusion intrapleural pressure in general is minus 5 the reason why it is minus 5 visceral pleura is attached to lung parietal pleura for example yeah this is visceral pleura is attached to lung parietal pleura is attached to chest wall cavity visceral pleura tries to pull the lung inwards parietal pleura tries to pull the chest wall cavity outward or it is other way chest wall cavity pulls the parietal pleura outwards lungs tries to pull the visceral pleura inwards so a space is created a session space is created because of the space the volume seems to be increased and because of that pressure is decreased now next we will be discussing about trans pressures three trans pressures i am going to discuss trans means across a structure or the difference between two pressures trans meaning means across a structure or difference between two structures so now what i am going to do is yeah like this we can make yeah one where is two yeah this is two so now see here yeah this is two i will again write it to two here so that you can understand so one is intraalveolar pressure two is intrapleural pressure three is atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure three is chest wall cavity but it is also continuous with atmosphere now what i want to do to know is yes one minus two that is one trans pressure so now you can try to name that so one minus two is the difference between intraalveolar pressure which is considered to be yeah you can pass the evident answer i will give the mcq intraalveolar pressure at resting lung is option a zero option b minus five option c minus eight you can try to answer at resting state intraalveolar pressure is zero option a minus five option b minus eight option c try to answer yes the answer is zero because you are not going to inspire not going to expire it is in direct communication with atmosphere 760 but this is zero with respect to atmosphere it is same no plus no minus nothing coming in nothing going out simple so intraalveolar pressure here it is zero here it is minus five so now i am going to calculate yeah one minus two is please note it down it is called a trans pulmonary pressure pulmonary means lung so trans pulmonary pressure which is equal to 1 minus 2 that is intraalveolar pressure minus intrapleural pressure yeah, you can calculate which is equal to 0 minus minus 5 which is equal to plus 5 so trans pulmonary pressure is plus 5 so that plus that plus 5 is the pressure gradient which tries to make the lungs expand in the resting state the next pressure you try to answer i will draw here yeah 2 yeah 2 minus 3 so this is another transfer so 2 is plural space 3 is chest wall cavity so 2 minus 3 is another pressure which is we call it as trans thoracic pressure ttp trans thoracic pressure which is equal to 2 minus 3 2 is intrapleural pressure minus atmospheric pressure yeah you all know the value for intrapleural pressure already we calculated which is minus 5 minus 0 which is going to be minus 5 yeah so trans thoracic pressure is minus 5 this minus this 2 minus 3 2 is intrapleural pressure which is minus 5 atmospheric pressure is 0 yeah now last i will put it in black one minus three which is another trans pressure any idea what is the name for that you can pause the video if you want 
1 minus 3 or intraalveolar pressure minus atmospheric pressure. Yeah, it is trans respiratory pressure, note it down. Trans. So, three pressures trans pulmonary pressure, trans thoracic pressure, trans respiratory pressure is 1 minus 3. So, what is the value of 1? That is intraalveolar pressure, 0. What is the value of atmospheric pressure? 0. So, transfer is 0. So, the pressure including everything, the entire respiratory system with respect to atmospheric pressure is 0 because no air is coming in, no air is going out. So, I hope you are very clear. So, today I have discussed about the various pressures present within the respiratory system. And one more important point. As I mentioned, I, if possible, I can even draw the diagram. Yeah, this is also a very important diagram. I already explained just to make it simple or to make it complicated, whatever way you understood. So, this is alveoli. So, this is alveoli and this is chest wall or in fact, this is chest wall. Maybe this is pleura. Okay. So, this is alveoli and this is chest wall, chest cavity. So, this is the respiratory system, first diagram. Now, what happens? I am taking the lungs, I have already explained, but just to show. Lung alone. See here, very, very important. So, lung alone, what happens? The alveoli, maybe not this much shrink, but for our understanding. The lung loves to recoil. The tendency of a lung elastic structure is it loves to recoil. So, what happens? Once the lung is without the chest wall cavity, it is uh, collapsed. Lung alone is like this. Now, see here, this is chest cavity. It expands. So, this diagram, so 1, 2. So, I listen the, see the diagram, 1 is when the lung, I am here mentioning alveoli because alveoli is a part of lung. So, once the lung is taken outside of the respiratory system, it is shrinked here. The alveoli which is in the respiratory system is this size, but here it has shrinked because lung loves to recoil. What happens to chest wall? This chest wall and this chest wall is just here, cavity. Here within the respiratory system, the alveoli is present, it is like this, here it has expanded. The reason for expanded is already we discussed the direction like lung tries to go inward visceral pura, chest wall parietal pura tries to go outwards. That's why intrapural pressure is negative, already we explained. Now what I am going to do is very very important. Yeah, in this expanded chest wall cavity, I am going to put this alveoli. Now we have to understand. Now what happens? Once I put the alveoli inside, which has visceral pleura, and this is parietal pleura will be actually very close here, but for understanding, I am giving the gap. Yeah. Now, what happens is its nature is to expand, alveolar nature is to shrink or recoil. But once when I put the alveoli inside the chest wall cavity, these two pleura allows to be sticky. So, what happens now? Yeah, once I put this, what happens? See here. The expanded chest wall cavity little bit comes inside. And this shrinked alveoli little bit enlarged. Maybe I should have drawn separately the chest wall cavity. So, very, very important. Uh, now, note it down. 3 is same as 1. So, what happened just here? When the lung is alone, it is recoiling. When the chest wall is alone, it is expanding. But once I put the lung into the chest wall cavity, which is respiratory system. Yeah, this is visceral pura. Parietal pura is within the lung. But for understanding, I am giving a space. Usually, it will not be that much space. They are very sticky to each other. So, now what happens once I put this? Even though it loves to recoil, yeah, now this happens. The parietal pura and visceral pura to avoid that friction tries to be sticky to each other. So, this is what happens. So, the chest wall is expanding because of the negative intrapleural pressure. So, this you should understand. The diagram of the respiratory system, 
chest wall cavity alone when taken outside, alveolar alone when taken outside. So, this is also an important point which you have to understand. So, today I have discussed about the resting lung, various pressures, various, so three pressures I discussed, intrapleural, intraalveolar, atmospheric pressure which is chest wall cavity pressure, three transmitter pressures, trans means across the structure, even the values we discussed. In the studio, I am going to discuss about once I start inspiring, what will happen to this change in the pressure. So, next video, part 2 I told. So, mechanics of respiration part 2 is going to be once I start inspiring or just I will give an uh, idea of the next video. See here. Yeah, once I start inspiring. See here, I am going to inspire. So, some volume of air is going to enter inside. So, what will happen? When volume enters, pressure has to decrease. So, what will happen to internal level pressure as the volume increases? It tries to decrease. Maybe it will come to minus 1 like that. So, that we will be discussing in next video. But keep in mind, inspiration is always active process because to make the volume come inside, even though internal pressure is minus 5, that negativity alone is not important. As I already mentioned, some active process is needed for inspiration. So, for example, this diaphragm will start contracting because already here the pressure has become more positive. So, I need more negativity here. I already discussed. Here it is minus 8, here it is minus 5, maybe here it is minus 3. Maybe I want to increase it more. So, what happens? The diaphragm contracts which causes increase in vertical diameter, all those things. So, in next video, I will be discussing about muscles of inspiration, muscles of expiration, during inspiration, what will happen to this pressures? During expiration, what will happen to this all these pressures? And I will draw in the graph. So, second video is also going to be very, very important like this first video. So, this is a teaser for the second video. We will meet in the next video. If you like this video, please share to all our friends community. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, Dr. Sen Physiology, please subscribe the channel and press the bell button so that you can get notification for the upcoming videos. Thank you. Have a nice day.